the Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur, and he said, Hagar, servant of Sarah, where have you come from, and where you are going? I'm running away from my sister Sarah, she answered. Then the angel of the Lord told her, Go back to your mistress and submit to her. Then the angel added, I will so increase your descendants that they will be too, too numerous to come. So that's all up to there. First, um, in summary, I will tell you the summary of the story. It tells the story of Hagar when Sarai wanted her husband to have a son. Therefore, she let her maid servant Hagar and Abram to build a family. But when Hagar is already pregnant, she is despising Sarah. Sarah and her mistress. It's like she's hating and disliking her. That's why Sarah asked Abram what she could do to Hagar. Well, Abram said to her, do what you think is best for her. So she also despises Hagar and fled her away. Are we getting the story? <laughs> then an angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. The angel asked, why is she there? Hagar answered, I am running away from my mistress. But the angel of the Lord said to her that she must go back and submit to her mistress. Then in verse 11, 11 to 12, the angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now a child and you will have a son. You shall name him Ismael. For the Lord has heard of your misery. He will be a wild donkey of a man. His hand will be against everyone, and everyone's hand against him. And he will live in hostility toward all his brothers. In this verse, God is telling her that he pierced her. Her pain and agony. That's why God wants Hagar to name her son Ismael, meaning God pierced. In verse 13 and 14, she gave this name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. Please take note of the... Can you go back to the verse 30? You are the God who sees me. And I have now seen the one who sees me. Please take note of that. And verse 14. That is why the well was called Bir Lahai Roy. It is still there between Kaddish and Mary. So, therefore, Elroy, the name that has given to me to explain, is, means the God who sees me. Where El means God, the well is named the living one who sees me. In the verse 13, Hagar said, I have now seen the one who sees me. In our lives, sometimes we pray. We were despised by others, but always remember that God sees us, just like power. God sees our pain, our agony, our misery, and what we're going through. But don't be like Hagar, she ran away from it. God says we need to face every circumstance that we're about to overcome. But remember God is taking us. He will never let, let us fall. He's always there for us. Amen. When Hagar ran away from Sarai, she thought no one would see her, no one would notice her work, but God has seen her when nobody does. Amen. Just like to us. Moreover, as what I asked a while ago, why Hagar is seeking for refuge? It is because she hasn't seen God that is taking her in the people. Amen. Elroy, the God who sees me. God reveals himself into this name to tell us whatever we do, wherever we go, wherever we are, where, whenever we need help, he always sees us. He never left his eyes. The name Elroy is not just for Hagar, but for everyone of us. Now, I have four pointers here, and the first one is... God sees all of life in equities and injustice. Life is fair, so our God is. It's not because you don't have the things that non-Christians do have. Doesn't mean that God is unfair. Doesn't mean that all the non-believers are on their luxury while you're not. 
Then you're thinking like the pastor said like this. I'll be rich for God is rich. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. Amen. Something like that. Okay. It's not about the money, but friends. We will all face iniquities in our lives. These are tests from God if you would continue to trust in Him. Amen. Therefore, church, believe in Jesus Christ, for He sure is real. And nothing that has been declared in this Bible is not true. In Genesis 16, 5, Sarah said to Abram, May the Lord judge between you and me. She might have said it because she doesn't want to come up for another wrong thing she could have done. So in that, she's letting God to fight for her battle and her life. Also in Isaiah 33, 2, 22, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. It is we who, it is He who will save us. The Lord is our judge, He will not let you be abandoned. In Romans 2 12, for God does not show favoritism. So all of us will experience these things the trouble, the stress, pain, and suffering. But one thing is sure God won't give those things to you if you can't do it. No matter how small or how big your input is in life, you are going to right now. God has purpose for that. You just need to let Him be the judge. God doesn't have you very decent, so all of us will experience those things, including me, you, and pastors. Iniquity is never will forever, but God does. Number two. God sees our suffering and heartaches. He feels, he feels our pain too. He never wanted us to feel this agony, pain, sorrow, and suffering and loss. That's why he said in Matthew 11, 28, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. When you say no one could possibly know and see your pain and suffering because they don't walk and feel in your shoes, let me remind you that there is someone that carries you every day and He loves you so much. Okay. It says in Psalms 34, 18, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. That's why our God is with you whenever you feel down, you are suffering from recurrent trials, or you have had your heart broken. You just need to let God into your heart and let Him heal you. It says in Psalms, one verse of the tree. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Also in Philippians 4, 6 to 7. Philippians 4. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God will transcend all understanding with God. will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So you don't need to fill your burdens. Give it up to the Lord and give everything to Him. God loves you so much. Put your trust in Him. That's why it says in Psalms 56, 3, When I am afraid, I put my trust in You. Amen. And of course, number three, God sees our sin. Shock. Is anyone shocked? <laughs> of course God sees our sin no matter how small or how big it is. Nothing can be hidden from God. Church, this is what the Lord is saying to us. Who are you outside the church? What are the things you are doing outside the church? Are you still the one that you're showing in front of your pastors and brethren? Or you change your actions, you commit sins, you do worldly things outside the church. Are you a good actor acting holy and human in front of our pastors? No. Then when the pastors don't see us, you are back committing sins, adultery, and doing worldly things. And you say, it's okay to be like that. Pastor, don't see me or you don't know what I'm doing outside the church. Is it really? Are we still living our Christian life even outside the church? In Hebrews 4, 13, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. 
everything is untook and laid bare before the eyes of him, to whom we must give account. Nothing can be hidden from God's sight, no matter how far you try to be secreted from your brethren and pastors, everything will still be told. No secrets that will not unfold. Amen? In Luke 8, 17, for all that for all that is secret will eventually be brought out into the open, and everything that is concealed will be brought to light and made known to all. Amen. Also, it says in Mark 4, 22, For whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought and brought out into the open. So, it's kind of the same. God is the God of sin. You may never admit all the wrong things you do doing outside the church, but there's one and only one that can testify what you are doing outside the church, and that is God. I remember what Brother Tony said on his preaching like weeks ago. God is like a CCTV camera. He's watching you 24 hours a day. Amen. 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 God never lay off his eyes in church. Please think about it. This is the message of the Lord that is sending to us. Ask for forgiveness for the Lord and pray. The Lord is reminding us in Luke 12 to the tree. There is nothing concealed that will not be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight. And what you have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roots. And last of my pointers, number four, God sees what is yet to be. Amen. Before we were born, God, God already has a plan for us. He already knew what is the best and bad for us. We can plan for our future, but without the leading of God, it's all nothing. That's why we need to ask God's guidance and will in every decision that we're up to do. In Proverbs 16, 3-4, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and He will establish your plans. The Lord works out everything to its proper end, proper end even though we did for, the, for a day of disaster. Everything that you are planning to do, commit it to the Lord, and it should be, Lord, may your will be done. Because in Proverbs 19, 20-21, Listen to the advice and accept discipline. And at the end, your will be counted among the wise. Many are the plans in a person's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Yeah. God won't lead you on the wrong path if you would trust Him because it says in Proverbs 3, 5, 6, I don't know if I put it there, but it's here. The Lord... Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him and He will make your path straight. Also in Matthew 6, 31 to 34. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the... What's this? Pagans run after all these things and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Next slide, please. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Amen. So let us not be worried what our future will be because it says in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. All these things shall be added unto you. If God feeds the bird, what more his child, right? Amen. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is the bird, temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Focus on God. God is eternal and all the things on earth will fade away. That's why set your mind on things above. Uh, I think it's Colossians 3, 2. 
God has a plan for us, and He wants the best for us. All you need to do is not think on your own understanding. Let God seek, seek first His kingdom for us to be saved. Because He said in Jeremiah 29, 11, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. Personally, I can say I have now seen the one who sees me. Because in life, we're about to face a lot of failure, discouragement, discrimination, and more. But God sees everything that is happening in our lives. He knows what would be the best for us. God sees me in a different view than others don't. He sees something in me that I, I couldn't even see in myself. He believes in me. And to the things that I can do for the glory of God. When I'm about to give up because of so much failure in life, God sees me and helps me to go through a lot of things. That's why Elroy personally needs to me. God of seeing things differently and positively. He looks forward on ourselves, so everyone of us must also see him. God sees in a way that we don't see ourselves. Seriously, I don't even see myself playing keyboard on that stage, nor will stand in here. Because I'm like so shy about this, and I don't have much confidence, but... God sees me. God sees me when I do do things better. That's why I praise and thank God for all these things. We all just need to seek Him. He already saw at our worst and His days, and He always will. That's how God loves us. So, yeah, I'm kind of lost. <laughs> Beloved, when you're struggling and want to run away from your trials, problems, you have debts to pay, you are suffering from physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental sickness. Remember the story of Hagar. Remember thy God. I am the God who sees you. I know exactly what you are going to, says the Lord. Just open your heart and let God in. He's been knocking on the door of your heart and waiting for you to let him come. Open it up and he will give you rest. You are not alone in your journey. Your wife, your husband, sisters and brothers may have lived, but God will never be. The Lord knows what's in your heart, even you haven't told him yet. But God won't make a move if won't make a move if you haven't asked for help. He's willing to help you. Just call upon the name of the Lord. God sees your pain. God sees how much you are struggling right now. God sees how much you wanted to give up. God sees everything. And also God hears. Talk to Jesus. Talk to God. Sometimes all you need is someone to comfort you and to give you rest from all your iniquities. And God is the only answer for all of them. And if you think you haven't asked for God's forgiveness for all your sins, ask Him to change you. Have a chat with Him. Only God knows what you are doing outside of church. God is not dead. God is not blind. God is real. Amen? Amen. God is your fire. Live, him, live up everything to Jesus. We can do nothing without God. Surrender your life to God and God will see and hear your prayers. Can we all stand up please? Church, I want you to close your eyes and think of a picture. And what do you want to see it? Think of a picture frame and what do you want to see it on? What kind of picture you are seeing right now? Anything, me or your final picture or your favorite toy or whatever picture is it? What anything? Now open your eyes. God is telling you, you can only see the big part or the center of the picture, but I can see the whole picture and I know how to complete it. In life, there will be rocks. Sometimes we're going to fall and we're going to stumble. There will be a lot of darkness that we're up to face. But like in a picture and painting, it will never be beautiful without dark and bright colors. We're just, we just need to sing for God's presence. Always remember, you are God's masterpiece. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen. Amen.